Tspeak at 222 with the ISO headquarters here. It's 9.35 p.m. on the East Coast in this great state of Michigan. Um, we're going to go over an article here from my, on Swift.com. And it's going to say, why does friction and cross-border payments matter? After this, if you stick around, I'm going to do technical analysis on a few of our favorite coins, including Dogecoin, Shiba, Algo, and IOTA. Those are going to be the four that I'm going to focus in on. going to be bing, bang, and a boom. Um, because we have to talk about some bearish continuation patterns, so I'm going to get through this. This is a five-minute read, so stick around until the end. I'm going to do more stuff like this and then technical analysis at the end. Thank you all. Hit that like button and sit back and relax. So, why does friction and cross-border payments matter? What are the main blockers to achieving frictionless cross-border payments? What progress has been made so far? And what more needs to be done? Our expert panel discussed blah, blah, blah. So in today's environment, users expect payments to be fast, trackable, and predictable. But where cross-border payments are concerned, there continue to be many areas of friction that can reduce efficiency and impact the customer experience. In a session at this year's CYBOS, a group of experts discussed where friction arises and how this can be addressed. Why does friction matter? Introducing the session, Thomas Halpern, MD, Global Head of Payment Products of, at HSBC, pointed out that friction in the system costs financial institutions a significant amount of money every year. What's even more important is the impact it's having in terms of loss opportunities, increased risk that it's putting into the system, and the unpredictability that it is so critical for our customers, he added. As Vikram Parjampi, Senior Product Manager at City, noted, <coughs> During the discussion, another important consideration is that customer expectations are continuing to evolve. In light of developments such as digital payments, instant payment schemes, and mobile wallets, consumers increasingly expect a fast, intuitive banking service and payment experience. And we're seeing those same expectations cross over into the cross-border payment space. But as label Isabel Smith, head of direct clearing and asset account services products at BNY Mellon, pointed out, Payments are not the primary purses of business for clients. Nobody wakes up in the morning and says, great, I'm going to do a few payments today. She commented, people want to conduct their own business, and payments are something that has to happen seamless, seamlessly to support their primary business objective. Addressing sources of friction. The panel tuned to the areas the financial community must address to increase efficiency in the cross-border payment process. Mark Rucker, Global Head Institutional Cash Management Products at Deutsche Bank. Commented that while Swift GPI has brought transparency over the status of payments, continuing sources of friction include differing market practices around the globe, as well as the repetition of activities such as sanctions, screening by multiple parties along the payment chain. Other sources of friction include the use of unstructured data that has to be analyzed by systems or by people, said Schmidt, and for payments that cannot be straight through processed. She noted that a payment can travel all the way to the beneficiary bank before the account number is validating against the account name. This can result in a costly investigation in delays, highlighting the need for solutions like payment pre-validation. When it comes to improving data, ISO 20022 is key. Parnobibi said that when the rich structured data provided by ISO 20022 can be combined with a common set of agreed rules, we can start to do two things. We ensure the integrity of the payment end-to-end -end and start to enforce the immutability of key data elements, ensuring most of that rich payment information gets to the end beneficiary. In the end, what really is going to make the big difference is to know at a granular a granular. Uh, granular level what every piece of information in the payment actually means. Schmidt concluded, so we're very much looking forward to the ISO implementation, being able to use the structured data, exceptions and investigations. Turning the exceptions and investigations, the panelists noted that processes are built around unstructured free format messages that are passed serially back through the chain. This leads to certain challenges, including limited transparency over the status of queries, long resolution times, and a lack of responsiveness. As well as being costly and manually intensive for banks, this also translates into a poor customer experience. Parnaby pointed out the value that Swift's case resolution service brings to this process. Yukiko Kanai, Deputy General Manager, International Deputy at the 
Shangaku Bank Limited said that since adoption case resolution, the bank has been able to make and track inquiries via GPI, with responses now received much quicker, typically within two days. The more banks there are participating in case management, the more effective it will become for all parties, can I said. Moving forward, where other solutions are concerned, as Rucker commented, embracing pre-validation and improving data are key to making payments more predictable. He added that with a combination of collaboration and having the right tools in place, a bank can determine the end-to-end cost of a payment in advance, enabling them to provide total transparency to customers up front. The introduction of the Enhanced SWIFT platform due to the go-live in November 2022 will also be transformational in this regard. It will enable the integration of services such as pre-validation and case management more closely with the business's transaction, reducing friction across the payment life cycle. The successful collaboration that the industry saw in the high-value payments space with SWIFT GPI has also paved the way for SWIFT Go, our new innovative low-value payment services that allow allows small businesses and retail customers to send fast and predictable cross-border payments directly from their accounts. That's a game-changer to the way we're currently approaching cross-border payments, Wrecker added, concluding that Swift Go is definitely something that will enable a lot more services going forward. As partially concluded, in a frictionless future, cross-border payments should really be invisible and ambiguous. You can't do it single-handedly. It's about collaborating, co-creating, and innovating together. So I hope that helps. I hope that you guys found that fascinating. So now what I want to go to is I want to go through Algo, Iota, Doge, and Shiba. So, I believe with Algo, we, I just wanted to show you the support resistance lines real quick. Get you out of here because Algo is on a slightly different pattern than most of them. Just the way it's set up. Hope that update helped a little bit, guys, with um, what's going on. I like to read those articles, but now I'm going to do a little TA after the articles just so you guys can see a little bit of what's going on in the current market. So just make sure to hit that like button as well, guys. It really does help. So I'll go. In the daily time frame, we've got 200 day. Oh, shit. The 200 day is down here. And we're going to move this up. Right there at $1.49. We have the double bottom down here at $1.41. So that's what I'm expecting to happen. We got a trading zone right now between $1.57 and $1.77 down here. But we're really trading between $1.90 resistance, $1.57 support. We actually have a bull flag if we can hold on to this and if we drop off, we'll come down to the 200 day, and that's what I'm expecting to happen. That's why I think the whole market's about to have a big drop. And Algo would come down some 12.9%, and then it would have a fantastic bounce ahead of it if it just holds that. So I think expect a double bottom there, and expect this to go likely to $2.50 or higher after this bounce is complete. So that's what I'm looking at with Algo. Iota is at $1.18. Iota is a completely opposite story. It has a bear pennant. And you could say, oh, well, but yeah, it came all the way back down and actually created a bigger drop point. So you can't say it's doing exactly what Algo is. Algo is not on the same pattern. It does have a drop, but the drop's going to go back to the double bottom, it feels like. And then it's going to pull back up. If it falls through there, then we have something else to talk about. So Algo, drop point, very clear. Continuation. This is going to continue to the double bottom, if not farther into this area. So that's what you need to watch for with Algo. I mean, with Iota, you got $1.22 resistance, $1.12 support, but these are useless. This $1.08 isn't going to happen. So the only support level you're really worried about is a dollar. If it breaks through there, you're done. Doge, $17.83. This was one of my best calls I've ever made when it comes to Doge. We called it all the way from up at 35 cents and nailed it exactly at 16 cents for this consolidation area. 
it did go down farther than I even thought it was going to at this point. There's 13 cents. And then I have another spot, as everybody knows, who watches my show down at 9 cents for those. I didn't want to scare anybody, but it's time to have it out there. I'm not necessarily saying it's going to go there, but on a continuation pattern to the downside, because this is a bear pennant as well as IOTA was, you come back up for phase two, and then you have a drop point, and then you either come up, or on this drop point, you come down to here. So that's what we're looking for with those. So we have an 1828 for resistance, a 1601 for support, a drop point of 1306 on this double bottom. If we break that, we go to 0922. So sub 10 cent does. What a great steal of a buying opportunity that would be. And then with Shiba, again, we're on a bearish continuation pattern. So everybody's saying, oh, Shiba's a great buy right now. Wait for this drop because this is a continuation of the downside unless something miraculous happens. You're going to continue and you're going to come down here and then maybe that's where you do it at the double bottom right and then you continue the upside but if it's a continuation of the downside on a uh, bear pennant and it comes through here and gets rejected it would come down here to one nine two three so imagine that buying opportunity make sure to hit that like button have a great night everybody